Welcome to Transport Vlog. My name is Paul and this is another update video on what's happening with Sydney Metro work at Sydenham Station but also at Marrickville Dive Site. So I'm currently on Burroughs Avenue and right behind me is a new entrance. So one of the things we're going to talk about this video is the two new entrances at Sydenham Station and then I'll do my normal update on what is happening at Marrickville Dive Site. The existing entrance to Sydenham Station is on Gleeson Avenue and it looks like this. As part of the Sydney Metro project, Sydenham Station is going to get two new entrances. The first one is on Burroughs Avenue. So here is the new entrance on Burroughs Avenue and as you can see it's looking pretty finished. The new station entrance is immediately in front of the new aerial concourse footbridge which will provide stair and lift access to all platforms. More on this in a moment. It looks like this station entrance could open well before Sydney Metro arrives, possibly even this year. Here is a close-up of the new stairs. This is looking back towards Gleeson Avenue and you can see the existing station entrance in the background. The other new station entrance will be on the opposite side of the station on Railway Parade. So this is on Sydenham Road looking towards Railway Parade and you can see the resemblance of a new station entrance still very much in the early stages compared to the one on Burroughs Avenue. However, you can see how it will connect with the new aerial concourse footbridge. Here is a more close-up view from the same location. And a nice view of the new aerial concourse. The new railway parade entrance will provide very easy access to Sydney Metro trains travelling towards the CBD and easy access via the aerial concourse to all the other platforms at Sydenham Station. Platforms 1 and 2 are being extended north to allow a completely straight platform for Sydney Metro trains. More on this in a moment. Here is a view of the construction of the new station entrance on Railway Parade from Platform 4. And if you look closely, you might be able to see a little bit of evidence of the Sydney Metro platforms extending north as well. You'll get a better view of the extended Sydney Metro platforms later in this video when I show the view from the train. So now turning our attention to the new aerial concourse overbridge. This will provide stair and lift access to all platforms. The roof of the new aerial concourse seems to blend in very well with the roofs of the existing station buildings. Well, I think so anyway. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Now getting up close and personal. So now looking at platforms one and two. So these were the old platforms to and from the Bankstown line and these were closed at the end of 2019 to make way for rebuilding for Sydney Metro. However, there is a slight problem. These platforms are on a slight curve and that's a bit of a no-no for Sydney Metro. So they're being extended further north so that the platform can be completely straight. You can see evidence of the new straight platforms where this orange Hitachi excavator truck is. Now many of the stations on the line to Bankstown also have slightly curved platforms so it's going to be very interesting to see what's going to happen here but that's the subject of another video. Now on the southwest side of the station and you can see the new services building here.
During the Christmas and New Year holiday period at the end of 2019, major track work remodelling was done to allow the Bankstown line trains to use platforms 3 and 4 rather than platforms 1 and 2. I do plan to talk about this in another video. So to recap what we've covered so far and to fill in a few gaps and provide a bit more information, I've got this diagram here. I'll put a link to the source of this diagram in the description below. But let's start off on the southwest side of the station. So we have the new services building, which is here. We've got the metro tracks that will be coming in here. The existing station entrance on Gleason Avenue is here. And then on Burroughs Avenue, there'll be a kiss and ride facility here. You've got the station entrance here and there'll be wheelchair accessible bus stops here and also a taxi rank. Then the existing heritage listed station buildings between platforms two and three, they're staying, they're here. And also the heritage listed buildings um, on platforms four and five, they're staying as well. Uh, the buildings on platform one, they will be demolished and replaced. You can see the new building here. There'll be wheelchair accessible bus stops out here. Then we've got the new aerial concourse, as you can see here. And then we've got the new station entrance on railway parade, which is here. And then it looks like this is going to be cycle parking. I suspect there might be other things happening in this building as well. And then we have the Metro shunt track. I haven't talked about this yet. I'm going to cover this a bit more in a moment, um, but this comes into here. And then we've got the extended platforms one and two extended to the north to allow a straight Metro platform, as you can see here. So when Sydney Metro opens, Sydenham station is going to become a major interchange. I wonder if this will be a good enough reason for the South Coast Express trains to start stopping here. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. So now moving on to the Marrickville dive site and the new trains facility south. So Sydenham station is just here on the southwest. The Metro shunt track is just here that I mentioned earlier. The Sydney Metro lines will be here. So platforms one and two probably finish around about here. You've then got a crossover junction here that will allow Metro trains to access either platform and also provides access into the train stabling facility. The trains will then enter the tunnels here. This is the dive site indicated in green, but one line will go round the edge of the tunnel adjacent to the existing rail lines all the way to Bedroom Road and a little bit beyond. I think this line should be in this colour, not in blue, because it won't be used in passenger service, but it will be used to allow trains to access the train stabling facility via this line here that goes over the dive site and into the train stabling facility here. So this means there's two ways into the train stabling facility. So this provides operational flexibility. You can see the uh, stabling lines here and there's a few more here. I'm not sure if some of these are going to be covered or whether they're all going to be outside. There is provision for a future train wash facility here. Then we have the Sydenham pit drainage area, which is here. And it says new pumping station building, but actually it's the old pumping station, which is a little bit further along here. That's been retained and refurbished. And I'll show you that in a moment. This is the view from the Bedwin Road Bridge. Now I'm guessing a little bit here, but the concrete structure you can see right now, I believe that's where four of the stabling sidings are going to go, with the remainder being on the light green area behind it. and the track bed for the Sydney Metro access track to the stabling facility is coming into view here. This is the track that will go beyond the Bedwin Road Bridge. Here is a close up of this track bed. Now, if you've seen my previous Sydenham update videos, you know I always like to film a few trains at the Bedwin Road Bridge. So we have a Tangara train going towards Sydenham Station here. And also we have a Waratah Series 2 train coming from Sydenham Station towards Central. And we have another Waratah Series 2 train, this time heading towards Sydenham Station. And we also have an Endeavour two-car diesel train 
There weren't any Endeavour trains scheduled at this time, so I believe this one is probably an empty service. Now, I don't remember seeing this protective fencing on the bridge before. I hope it's not going to take over and spoil the view. And the new pedestrian and cycleway bridge immediately to the north of the Bedouin Road Bridge is progressing quite nicely. Now on Railway Parade below the Bedouin Road Bridge, to the left of the fencing is the access track I was talking about earlier, and to the right is where I think some of the stabling tracks will go. Also from Railway Parade you can see the track bed for the new access track, the Bedouin Road Bridge is immediately to the left. If you know what's going on here, please do let me know in the comments. So I'm now on Edinburgh Road, you can see the Bedouin Road Bridge on the left. The green area is where I believe there will be some stabling tracks. The area in front of that I think will be a staff car park, but I'm not sure. The dark grey structure coming into view marks the entrance to the Sydney Metro tunnels. This structure houses a gantry crane that can slide along the entire length of this structure. It's used to drop heavy items into the tunnels below. I suspect it's used less now, now that there is fairly easy access to the tunnels from ground level. Thanks to Beren for mentioning this in the comments on my last Sydenham update video. If you know something I don't, please do leave a comment below and I can use your information in future videos. This is on Railway Parade at the junction with Edinburgh Road heading towards the Bedouin Road Bridge and you can see that the familiar Sydney blue hoardings have been replaced with something that's a lot more artistic. This is now towards the southwest end of Trains Facility South. This is probably where all the point work is going to be where the sidings will all funnel into the access track onto the Sydney Metro line. Again looking southwest, Sydenham Station is on your right. And as you can see this area looks absolutely ready now for tracks to start being laid. So as you can see all the very boring but essential stuff required to create trains facility south here at Marrickville dive site is all pretty much done and if you go back to my video in October you can see uh, all the drainage channels that were being put in place at that time so well worth checking that video out. So that's all done, they've diverted um, other drainage channels as well, put those underground, they've levelled off all the land here so now it looks like it's pretty much ready for track laying to start so I'll be checking back here regularly now and as soon as I start seeing some signs of tracks being laid I will be letting you know straight away. Now let's take a look from the train. So I'm now on a train leaving Sydenham. You can see the new railway parade entrance being constructed on the left and the extension of platforms one and two. From here there will be two metro tracks plus the third shunt track. The crossover junction will be about here and then after that will be the junction to the train stabling facility. From here you'll have the two metro tracks that are still above ground here, the extra track to access the stabling facility from the northeast end, and the point work that will lead to all the other stabling sidings. At this point the metro lines begin to descend into the tunnel and if you look carefully you can see some track that has already been laid. On this side of the fence you can see the track bed for the extra track that will provide access to the train facility from the northeast side. Now if you look really really carefully here you can see where the tunnel actually starts. It's actually a little bit after the grey gantry that I mentioned earlier. Hopefully with a bit of help from my purple arrow you can spot it. Now on a train back to Sydenham, the views from this angle can be quite different, so keep watching. Here is where the extra track into the train facility will start. 
and notice how this track starts to ascend very slightly. And this is where the line will split with one track going into the train services facility and the other one continuing to follow the existing Sydney trains line. Here is the stabling facility track layout again as a reminder. Notice the rails here waiting to be laid. I'm not sure if these are going in the tunnel or for the surrounding tracks. And now look out for where the two metro tracks will ascend to the surface just here. Now coming into view is the Heritage listed pump station and behind that the brand new aqueduct. I talked about these more in my March 21 update video so I'll link to that below. And here is a great view of the extensions of platforms one and two. I'm not sure if this is as far as they go or whether they'll be extending a little bit further. Here you can see the extended platforms really starting to take shape, along with the railway parade entrance being constructed behind it. So that was my update of what's happening at Sydenham Station as of May 2021 and also at Marrickville Dive Site as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, do give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and do leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. And if you have any questions, leave those below as well and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the Transport Vlog channel, then please do. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.